Paul, thanks so much for coming on. Um, a bit like, um, I hope to summarise your campaign, but it's, it's, it's where the personal meets the political. I think just to summarise, I'm going to ask you to explain about your campaign, but <coughs> in some sense, the Greater Manchester Mental Health Trust has suddenly come up with an announcement of a £90 million investment in a newly refurbished psychiatric hospital. They did it without any very little consultation. And you getting together with local community services to come up with better ways to mm. support the, the mental health community. <coughs> Is that, that's it really. If you could tell us about the campaign, that'd be yeah, great. I, I suppose it may seem strange that <clears throat> there's a, you know, local people have decided to campaign against the building of a new psychiatric hospital, but we felt <clears throat> that they did this in a, in a very top-down way. So we just heard that the NHS, through the a manifesto pledge made by Boris Johnson, the leader of the Conservative Party, that they would build 11 new or something hospitals across the country. And to meet that pledge, they did a deal with the Greater Manchester Mental Health Trust to use the money to build a new mental health facility. Um, the, the issue there is, is that um, who says we need it and what kind of mental health facility is this even going to be? So it's a very large one um, relative to, to what we understand because it's meeting the needs of a large community. Many people will be a long way from the psychiatric service. Um, <clears throat> so we, we opposed it. Eamon, we thought right from the beginning, we don't think this is a good idea. But to give you an idea who we are, I mean, in the previous two or three years, we've been working very hard to create a, a sense of alternative community around the channeling the recovery learning communities from the states, channeling Satiri House and channeling Trieste as well. Um, and what we know and what the families want is not what the service wants to provide right now. And there's a complete we think sense of denial within crisis service management about what's going on it's so hard to get into a psychiatric hospital in my country right now in my city you need only you will only get in if you abrogate your human rights and give up yourself to the mental health act it's the only way to get in and when you're discharged and they'll decide to charge you they discharge you to nothing and they make out there is a discharge discharging kind of policy but people are basically being sent to homeless hostels the whole situation, return to families with promises that something will happen and nothing does. So we rooted this community response in the idea that what you're offering us has no way been subject to any kind of consultation or engagement process to determine if this is what we need. So to get around that, we decided to form a group and we wrote a letter to the mayor of, this, of the city, of the, of the, of the uh, metropolitan county actually. And this guy, Andy Burnham, has got devolved powers, including the right to spend NHS money. So we decided to bypass the great, the trusts, the provider, bypass the, the, the kind of management structure around commissioning service and go straight to the guy at the top. Um, it's taken us, we wrote the letter in July. We're having our first meeting with the mayor tomorrow. It's taken us five months or something like that to get to the table of the mayor to talk to him about our concerns. Well done for getting a meeting with him. Yeah. So he and Andy Burnham, who is the man of the moment, really um, yeah. up north. Yeah, north. It, yes, it's given is meeting you. Oh well, well yeah. done. That's yeah. great. And, great news. And just to tell you how we did that. So what we did is we did something quite unusual. Is we formed relationships between family members, services, and people with lived experience, and also we brought in the trade. We have got the trade unions interested. So we've got a formidable front now. Um, we've organised now it's around a campaign which we call CHARM, um, which is a community for holistic, accessible and rights-based mental health. Um, and we're now going on the CHARM offensive, which is our big joke. Oh, good. <laughs> In the sense that we now want to show, we, we see the point about the campaign is we want to call them out on, on issues we don't think they're addressing in any way at all. And they're fundamentally about systemic racism that the service delivers upon people living in my community. And that's shown by the outcomes that people are over-medicated if they're black, they spend longer in inpatient care, and basically they are more, much more likely to have hands put upon them, knees on necks, if you like, in the, in the oh. Black Lives Matter context. And all of this is avoided because they think we've got broken brains and they're not pointing to where we know the need is, which is trauma, and social determinants. It's about marginalization, poverty, oppression. And if we don't wake up to those agendas, creating distress, 
and always think it's illnesses that are doing that we are never going to get a service that meets the needs of our community that's right i mean it, it is a shocking statistic that uh, if you're black british you're you're four times more likely to be sectioned and, and detained under the mental health act it's, so we're, uh, we're, yeah, totally i mean we, try, we we think we don't know what psych the management of psychiatry what world they live in but it's clearly an upper middle class world where people get paid loads of money because they don't they still think that these issues can be fixed by medication and by treatment regimes and by short stays when you're in crisis while you're stabilized it doesn't hit anything it just is you know as we would have said it's 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 it's, it's uh it's band-aid you know it's no it's no real fix to the solution so we're trying to challenge them fundamentally and say your service denies people human rights get that you know let's examine that um in the moment they avoid any good conversation but we know nationally they're trying to drive down the rates that people have to go into hospital because of the mental health act or the amount of time they spend on community treatment orders but you know we need we need that energy and we need to be pointing out that this is not right and to do that by what we thought to create a citizens campaign because it's our responsibility as citizens about the kind of mental health response that we divide we provide for our community not these trusts and commissioning groups <clears throat> we've got to set the tone so that's that's where we're taking our energy well that sounds a fantastic uh, achievement to get uh, that coalition of community uh, uh, individuals and families together and the trade unions. Mm. Do, do you think um, your approach with Andy Burnham is it going to be right more rights based, or have you got other ideas what a, a good community service looks like? Yeah, I think we, we we know that his weakness or his his interest maybe will, will be around equalities, and we think mental health services are so far behind all the equalities that are afforded other groups of people that face exclusion. So we were trying to bring mental health to the top of his equalities agenda. Meanwhile, we've also managed to, to uh, leave a meeting with the mental health service itself. So their senior management team eventually, after trying to ignore us for ages, have agreed to a meeting next week where we will go in there and talk to them about the issues that I've, I've explained. Um, it's no point in then building a posh new hospital, which has ensuite rooms, if the model of service delivery is the same as they're doing now, that would be a big mistake. And as one of our members said, who's got a grandson, a black, younger black man who's a grandson, if you provide a posh hospital, but as soon as he leaves, you abandon him to the family to look after and support. I don't care. We don't need a posh hospital. We, the, the support needs to be where we are at in the community. And that's not where it is. In Trieste, they've managed that. that it's essentially a home treatment service. They go here up there. The, 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 the people who are service users or clients of that service, they have their psychiatrist's phone number. They can call them wow. up direct. Unknown in my country. Nobody would get that. It would be regarded as in, in, entirely inappropriate. So the connections, I'm not saying that Trieste is perfect, but as a beacon for deinstitutionalization, look at their work. You can replace hospitals with hospitality. Vincenzo is right. There is a difference when you've got that be that bedrock of actually a you know a service which is determined to respect people's human rights and talks about freedom first they then are at a different level when you want to talk to them about e even going further so in, if, if you look at the links i've talked about some of the things we've done in trieste about creating recovery learning how communities and creating recovery houses it couldn't be done it, with, in, in, unless the service itself steps up to that mark and says we are not about we want democracy, we want freedom of mind, and we want to actually do as little harm as possible we can to the people that are in, in our that we're supporting. Uh, and I don't get that. I don't get that from Western psychiatry. And in that sense, yes, is very much the exception and not the rule. But it should be made the rule, in my opinion. I, I'm fascinated by Trieste too. That the political that a whole city has sort of gone there over the, over the years. Well, listen, I think we're coming up to, to the end. Thanks very much, Paul. That's a very good exercise in actually local campaign and how you can get uh, the right people to listen to get better services. So thank you for that.